He'll steady your ship. He'll calm your storm. And I've told you at the very beginning since I've been out here, one thing I found out in my life, it may not be in your time or my time frame, but it's in his time frame. And not to keep going back to my recent discovery, but in love in my life, then I'll tell you, it took a long time. It wasn't on my time frame, but I'm sure that was on his because it's much better than I'd ever been able to put together for myself. You know, in the early days of the church, the anchor, was representing of, uh, or was a symbol of hope. And they found in, in Rome, as they went through some of these catechisms of early Christians, they had found in Rome over 60 pictures or drawings of the anchor. I never thought about that, but the anchor is hope. Hope in Jesus Christ. Hope in the fact that we have a better place for us other than what we're here. As you well know, Jim started a group years ago that I'm still leading and uh, singing in called Sojourner. <clears throat> We're now Sojourner Quartet. Does anybody know what Sojourners are? We're all just Sojourners passing through this life. This isn't anything compared to what God's been preparing for us for a long, long time. So we're just, don't get too settled down here. While we're here, we need to anchor our anchor, or get our anchor on solid stuff, and that's Jesus. But don't get it stuck too much down here because we're not staying very long. That's the hope that we have. When you throw your anchor of faith into the water of the Word of God, it firmly lodges to the rock of ages, and that rock is who? Jesus Christ. There are a whole lot of reasons why anchors may not hold. Your rope might be too short. Your anchor may not be sufficient for the size of the boat you're in. You may throw it out and, uh, you know, the wind, it doesn't catch and the wind's just blowing you all over. Now, there is a few embarrassing reasons why your anchor may not hold. One is if you don't tie the knot tight enough, your anchor may become a prop on SpongeBob SquarePants. That, that was funnier when I did it at home. You know, so. I thought it was funny. Mark. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, also, forgetting to pull up your anchor when you get ready to move the boat, that's not always a good sign. Or if you're out there fishing with your buddy and you thought he was pulling up the anchor and he thought you were pulling up the anchor, and off you go. That's not good. Often in life, we find ourselves where our anchor doesn't hold. We sometimes end up in deep water. The waves are crashing in on us, and we just, we just can't see the end to it. We depend on uh, people that aren't secure, aren't reliable, and they aren't honest. There's only one anchor that holds in, in our life, no matter how high the water, how high the waves, how strong the wind. Once again, that anchor is Jesus Christ. This anchor is firmly, and I'm going to say this a couple times, so I want you to hear it. This anchor is firmly and eternally secure, reliable and trustworthy. This anchor is firmly and eternally secure, reliable and trustworthy. Once again, the anchor that holds is Jesus Christ. We put our trust in Jesus, and the anchor of hope is dropped, secure, and immovable. For all eternity. There's only, it's kind of interesting, there's only one place in the Bible that talks about an anchor, and that's, hopefully it'll be up there in a minute. It's Hebrews 6, 18 through 20. I want to read that to you real quick. It says, God did this so that two unchangeable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, we have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. Offer to us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become the high priest forever in the order of... Yeah, that. <laughs> I didn't study Greek. Basically what that's saying is the fact that Christ has gone on ahead of us. And when Christ hung on that cross and said, it is finished, that's when God ripped the, the 
curtain in two. See, Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, waiting for us. Now, you have to stretch your mind just a little bit, because when we drop our anchor here, basically what we're doing is we're throwing our anchor up and securing ourselves to Jesus Christ. Who sits at the right hand of the Father. Who's prepared a place for us. He's been working on a place for us for over 2,000 years. And I always say it's a much better place than I'll ever be able to build for myself down here. We're anchored in God's precious promises. That's found in Hebrews 6.18. It says, by two beautiful things in which it was impossible for God to lie. The foundation of our hope is in the unfailing promises of God. If any of you are familiar with the, the story of Abraham or Abram, and who God changed his name later to Abraham, and his son Sarah, they, for the longest time, wanted children and couldn't. And they came up with an idea that maybe they would have their house servant help them. As they were pursuing that, all of a sudden, God came to Abraham and said, I'm going to give you a child. Abraham laughed at him. He said, I'm too old. He said, oh, you don't know who you're messing with. I'm paraphrasing this. So God gave Abraham and his wife a baby. And God called him after the baby was born. God called him. He said, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice this baby. So Abraham took him up to the top of the mountain and ready the knife to sacrifice his only son. Knowing that God was a God of uh, resurrection, figuring if I sacrifice my son, God will bring him back. As he got ready to do it, God said, Abraham, you've passed the test. You've proven yourself to me. So there's a promise, the precious promises we have with Christ. There's a, um, a song, if I can find it, and I probably didn't bring it up here with me. I didn't. It's over here, if you'll excuse me for a second. And guess what? It's back there. We won't even talk about it. You remember uh, standing on the promises of God? He gives us promises every day. Each and every day. We have hope, we have God's promises, we have a home. A home in heaven that he's prepared for us. That's the hope that we have. That this isn't all there is to life. We have another life waiting for us. A much better life. Our anchor is secured in heaven because this is where Jesus, the solid rock, is. So don't set your, your anchor in sinking sand down here. It's just going to fill you. We need to set our anchor in Jesus Christ. Now, the, the neat thing is we, if we anchor our, ourselves to Christ, a lot of times as we pull the anchor in, or if we're close to a shoreline, and a lot of times people kind of throw their anchor up on the shoreline, the more we pull on that rope, and that rope that connects us from the boat to the anchor of Jesus Christ is faith. But the more we pull on that rope, the closer we get to Christ. Just like the more we pull on that rope, the more we come into the shore where it's safe and sound. The anchor is our hope, and faith is the cable that connects our boat to the anchor of Jesus Christ. So I, I, just give me an example this morning of some of you. What, what are some of us anchoring some of our hope to? Can anybody, can you think of things? Maybe something I haven't mentioned. Job. Job. That's right. Let me ask you this. What are you anchoring your hope to? Is it Jesus Christ? I sure pray for this. 